Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client and we're going to be getting connected with a, a, a family friend, a kitty cat named Bobby. And Bobby's not doing too well. She's uh, going through a transitioning process, so it's uh, hard on the family members. So I'm gonna go ahead and relax and then we'll see where spirit takes us with this, okay? Okay, Bobby, just gonna get relaxed here. Okay, this is quite awkward, but it's almost like an eyebrow is being pulled, a nose is being pushed this way, and then there's a weird tweak that's pulling on my heart over here. <laughs> it is all happening simultaneously. I also feel light is blinding my eye right here. It's like my left eye is just <laughs> blinded by light. I'm just going through a process right now. Everything is getting more peaceful. I'm still kind of in between what is uncomfortable. This light is really uncomfortable. It's more uncomfortable than the other weird pulls and pokes. <laughs> Now it's getting comfortable again, and quiet, and peaceful. My ears aren't picking up sound. There's a feeling of being lost, a bit lost. And I experience myself as a cat, and I'm walking through the dark, but I can't see anything, can't see anything in the dark. And I can't feel my paw prints on the ground either. So I'm not touching the ground. Again, the feeling of where am I? Things are getting, again, simpler, easier. Then another tug happens. And it's in the mind. It's like these weird tugs are a bit scrambling. But they get easier each time. First it was really loud and noticeable. Then things get relaxed. And then there's something else. And then that relaxes. But as it gets it goes on, it gets easier and easier. To the point that it's not really a, a distraction. Not really so difficult. All right, we're going to go into something here. It's very tight, a very, very tight place. But there is a doorway, and I have to push the doors um, in this direction. Like, I have to push them open, and then they open on both sides. And I'm walking through, and it's just ridiculously stuffed in here. And it looks like intestinal material. It's just like, it's a, it's full. Like, and I'm, I'm short. I mean, I'm small in comparison to this very tall place that is stuffed full of what looks like intestines. And I'm just standing here looking at all of this. But the intestines kind of uh, transition into being more like, like some type of crazy forest where all the branches, there's like no trees, they're just like these, these branches that go everywhere and make it very difficult for you to move through. But again, it's getting easier. And what was, uh, it was just this like, all of these intestines, it's drying up into these branches which is drying up even further. Okay, this is interesting and different. There's a man who is uh, in prison, and he's got a cigarette, and his hands are cuffed. So he's kind of smoking like this, and he's wearing an orange jumpsuit, and he's sitting in a chair under an investigation, like um, someone's going to come in and ask him some questions. But nobody ever comes, and he waits. And he starts to wonder what he's waiting for. But time seems to... It's like the cigarette never burns down. 
And so even if this is five minutes, it could be years and years and years and years and years of our idea of time, and it would not be fully understood. It's almost like you could sit in a moment with a cigarette and you're waiting for an event to happen that never comes, but you're still stuck within that five minute period. So you're just smoking and the cigarette never burns out and you have the means to do it. He's starting to notice though that something is different. And once he notices something is different, the cigarette then becomes very small and burns his fingers and he instantly drops it. And he starts to feel a bit disoriented. He's wondering if anybody is actually here or if it's just him. But he never gets out of the chair. He never stands up to just walk around even. He just keeps sitting in the chair. I'm not allowed to go to him yet. All we can do is observe. So I'm going to let this image just be for right now. And we're going to return to the door where things that were overwhelming and a bit disturbing are drying up into something a little bit more comprehensible, which is drying up into an opportunity to move forward. And there must be something going on here in your life because as you move forward in your life, it's triggering an, um, a transition for Bobby because you're complete now with your cycle that Bobby was there to help you through. And so now that you're complete, your friendship and your time together is complete too. So it's actually the divine time here. It always is a divine time. So are these messages about Bobby or are these messages about you? Boy, you're perplexed. And you're sitting down to think, I see opportunity for you to move forward, but you don't yet. You sit down to think. And there's a black orb I see now in the center of this room that is now empty. You could walk through it now. And there's a big black orb levitating there, the center of the room. And you know that it's calling you, but you just don't go to it. You're going through a something inside yourself, a bit of a resistance. I'm not sure what, it's like, um, okay, how do I want to describe this? You ever know that everything in your life is on the right path? but something's kind of unreconciled and it just kind of um, irritates you. And so even if you had um, more exciting new experiences, they wouldn't be completely fulfilling because of that odd irritation. Um, I'm asking him for a better, like an actual example to help us understand because I, I know what this feeling is and I don't know how to just describe it exactly. It's like not growing out of something. It's not growing out of a condition that developed at a younger age, not growing up or growing out of it. And you're so sad. And it's preventing you from reaching this black orb, but it's not preventing you because what control does it really have over you? Because any time you could just decide to go. I see Bobby now coming in to help you with this. It's like, 
it's interesting because Bobby is, um, first I see Bobby as like a gray cat, okay? Like a perfectly gray cat. And then Bobby's now coming in as a black cat. So <laughs> your cat could have long hair, short hair, be whatever colors. Um, but this is the way that Bobby is revealing um, herself to me, okay? <laughs> so she's coming to you. Because it's almost like, how do I move on from the past? How do I let go of the past? How do I acknowledge that I'm not a part of that person anymore? How do I not be associated with that person anymore? It's like everything in life created the history that molded and shaped you into who you are today. So you're, you're a reflection of everything that was. But yet you're nothing of what was. So how do you stop being that which molded and shaped you to this perfect moment? And now you, you're trying to understand or figure this out, which is now delaying you from doing something so simple as to go to this. It's interesting because this is just part of it. There was also kind of an odd annoyance that just kind of lingered there. And it's an angry thing. It's a feeling of anger. That has, that isn't necessarily about how to, how to be this new persona of who you feel that you are right now. That isn't the molded and shaped you that has been this person over time that now became you. You don't relate to that history because you don't want, you don't choose to. That's not your identity that you are choosing. Now in the mix of this, because we're creating a salad here, it's like here's this the lettuce is this situation. Now we've got some tomatoes and, and you know, so we're adding things here to the salad in order to make it complete, which is uh, the balance of what you're going through. And there is in the tomatoes here, um, a little, it's like a, an angry thing. There is an angry thing in here, an unsettled thing. It's kind of a ridiculous thing. It's almost like, let's say, let's say this. Um, this is an example. Let's say that you had weight issues. And then you'd, you'd found a way to lose weight. But something didn't uh, kind of correct itself. And you had a bitterness towards the way that you were, you felt or were treated. And maybe you kind of attacked yourself a bit, um even after losing weight in a way that you shouldn't react this way. It's like, it doesn't make sense, but it does make sense. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out how to describe this feeling. It's like, even though you did it, there's still a bitterness about having to have done it. A bitterness about it had to be like that. Even though it doesn't even have to exist because it's over now but yet it still is there in the tomatoes. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's in you. So <laughs> explore your anger. <laughs> Feel where the bitterness lies. <laughs> it will. It is in there, okay? This is good. And you're going, we're going to be venting out some anger, okay? Because you've got, there is some anger, definite anger going on here that you, you actually need to get mad. You actually do need to blow up and explode because it's volatile. I mean, it's like, it's like really close. This strand here, the string is really close to the dynamite and the spark is right there. And it actually just needs to be done. It just needs to have its moment and be done so we can move on from it. It's part of this like transitioning thing you got going on. This is all huge. Do you understand how huge this is? So Bobby's a sign. Bobby's moving on because you're moving on. Do you understand? But you're trying to understand how to move on because you don't relate to who you are because you will you know there's uh, things that are still a reflection of who you were that you don't choose to be that anymore. So how do you stop being who you've always been? <laughs> it's kind of like this. The anger is also there. Bobby's here. Bobby's looking skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. That makes me sad. 
makes me really sad. It's like there's no hope for Bobby. I mean, it's, it's, um, uh, I keep thinking of the word roadkill too because, um, animals, they get hit and they get kind of, it's like flattened, you know? And there's, um, it, it's like absolutely devastating to see this image. It's like a cat that's still standing. It's like a devastating thing. And it's not the way that it should be. It shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be like this. I mean, it's on the level of walking roadkill. And I'm supposed to use these harsh terms. Um, because we just gotta acknowledge it for the very extremes that it is, that is hard to look at. It's hard to process it. It's hard to deal with it. It's hard to accept it. These are the types of feelings that you, you go through when you have to watch an your favorite animals go through a transitioning process. It's hard. <sighs> There's stress also involved here. And it's not necessarily, you wouldn't think that this would be, there would be stress involved. There's also stress. And I don't know if it's because of the transition process. You're going through a big old shift. And this stress, it could potentially be um, the, the reshaping of you. It could be future energies that you're picking up on right now. I mean, it doesn't necessarily feel like there's stress going on here. Even with Bobby in the, in the emotions, even with the volatile re reactions going on underneath the surface of things, um, even with the knowing that I'm ready to let go, but how do I let go of that persona? You know, all this is going on in your energy field right now. And then stress. What is the stress though? The stress doesn't have an identity other than it is stress. It is stress. You are going through stress. And I don't think you would think you are going through stress, but you are. Because there's, you, you have a way of, of, there's some sort of peace or um, composure to the way that you're processing through things. So because of that, there's a t like a stress tolerance or a stress like conquering um, ability there. But there's stress here, there's stress. So do you, do you find this interesting how Bobby is also a messenger. Bobby is also, um, it's like a transition for Bobby is also a sign for you of you going through a major rebirth in your own life. But Bobby is a messenger too. And it's like Bobby wants you to know these things as like a final gift to help you to get to the next step. Because you've been there to help Bobby get through all of Bobby's steps, right? So Bobby wants to be there to help you get through your steps too. Uh, now I know we're talking about a lot of different things here, but there's a tough thing now. You have a weird energetic cord um, connected to Bobby and I gotta remove that and it's different. It's like electrical energy and it comes down the side of you, all the way down the side. So if you, it's like right there, I, it's like a line, okay? And it goes all the way down. It's like a fence <laughs> and it's an electric fence <laughs> and, it, and it's all the way down the side of you and it is connected to Bobby. Never seen an energy cord quite like this. <laughs> Just a moment here. It is very unusual. I'm I'm touching it right now. And you kind of flicker a little bit. Like a bad reception or something. And it feels like a physical version of you and a bit of a, uh, a non-physical version that's a blip. Or just an energy fence. <laughs> because I see this sort of flickered um, other self. That is 100% a part of the energy fence that is connected to Bobby as well. And you can't let go of that. You can't resolve it. This is going to help you feel a bajillion times better. It's also going to clear your mind. It's also going to get you grounded and ready. Because the black orb is calling you. And this black orb isn't scary or anything. Like It just happens to be black. Okay, It's just like 
Bobby's fur, when I see Bobby in this image, just happens to be black. It's just, it just happened to be these colors. But there's no, like, energy, like, scary going on here. It just is this way. You're growing your hair out. And I see it getting longer. And as it grows longer, you... It's like your transition. It's, it's part of a transitioning process. It's part of you. And a rebirth of your own identity. I, I wish I could have the words to explain to you what this is like for me to see it. I, there's the experience of lots of groceries and carrying out a paper bag full of like way too many groceries. I don't know how that paper bag even fits all those groceries in there. It's, it's going to become a disaster, but it never happens. It just makes it all the way home and none of the groceries fall out and the bag never rips or anything. You got this. You got it. You got it together. You made it happen. You kept it together. And you managed to take a lot of stuff with you more than anybody else could possibly fit in a paper bag. You did it. And you did it without it ripping. I mean, it's like amazing that you could do that. But all the stuff in this paper bag, you're setting it down. None of it actually is anything you need anymore. You did need it. Now you don't need any of it. So what does that mean? You're telling me I went to the store and I got all this stuff. I went through the checkout and then I carried this paper bag and all this stuff with me and I managed to do it without ripping. I was careful. I was awesome with it. And now you're telling me I don't need any of this stuff? And it's like the, your, your identity is part of um, the bread and the, <laughs> the butter and all these, um, art, these like items from the store. And now you're in an empty kitchen and it's just you. And you have nothing but you. Nothing but you. Not even Bobby is in this scene. Just you. Nobody is in this scene. No family, no, no dishes. Are in the, nothing. There's, the cupboards are empty. There's literally an empty house here. And just you in a kitchen just for a moment trying to make sense of life over the last however many years they came to this moment and now i am complete now i did all of that and now i'm standing in an empty kitchen of a familiar space familiar home a familiar place and it's unfamiliar to me it's almost like could you imagine, like, let's say you had a house that you thought you were going to live in for, you know, 30 years, and you lived in it for 20 years. And suddenly, life goes through some fast shifts, and now everything is out of the house. And you're like, I've been living in here for 20 years. And it's like I'm looking at this house with the eyes that, when I moved in, and this is what it looked like. And I'm moving out, and I didn't anticipate that I would move out of this house as quickly as this. I was, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, maybe this would be the house that I would stay in for the rest of my life. And now I'm standing and all of my stuff is out of this house. I am all that breathes in this house. And I'm moving on from everything I've ever known. From a house that I have lived in for 20 years, from, from a place that I've known for my whole life. Are you picking up on that like whoa moment of how weird life can be sometimes everything is familiar and now suddenly nothing is familiar and yet you're standing in this place and you're trying to figure out what what your eyes are seeing right now and it's real but none of it makes any sense this is another experience that's part of this message that bobby wants to share with you and it's interesting because there's a bit of you in Bobby's eyes, too. It's like um, a bit of your spirit is a part of Bobby's spirit. And sometimes we make such a meaningful connection that we share our own souls with each other. And so we kind of, um, like, gain soul energies when we love so much. 
So Bobby's soul energy is there with you and your heart and your soul energy is there with Bobby and Bobby's heart. So wonderful, so beautiful. You needed these images, these conversations, you needed this because now that I return to you and these strange doors and everything's changed, the intestines are gone, the branches that were blocking the way are gone, and all that remains is you sitting on some steps outside of an opportunity that is clear, free and clear for you to walk into, and there's something out of this world waiting for you. <laughs> but when you're ready, Bobby knows when Bobby's ready, when are you going to know when you're ready? It's time for you to know Time for you to explore that, that idea of knowing that it's time. <sighs> that angry Q. <laughs> it's like a letter Q in all of your alphabet with just a little letter Q in there that was angry and it was volatile and we were going to get the big explosion, just get it out. Somehow this conversation just smoothed all that out and all the alphabet is back in order and everybody's working together and it all makes sense again. But something still feels sad. Even the stress is reduced significantly. And the sadness isn't necessarily Bobby. It is if the fear of of who you are that you don't know it's like you're ready so here's your history and you're you see all these factors in history that you don't relate to anymore they don't they don't work i don't I don't want to be connected to that because I'm going to choose to express myself in a new way and we're just going to draw a line in the sand here and now I'm a new persona. But there's a bit of um, a fear frequency because of who you are stepping into and you know who that is deep down inside and it makes you a little bit intimidated of yourself. Isn't that kind of cool? You're intimidated of yourself. <sighs> That's even de-stressing and relaxing things down. There's so so okay, we're getting through the layers here. <sighs> This, this next layer, it's a new anger, new anger, different than the other one. And it can't express itself, so it remains in the dark. And it's a man shouting in the dark where nobody can hear him. It's like the volume's on mute. We know it's happening, it's in the dark, it's hidden in the dark, and it's on mute. So what's, what's really going on here? That's got to be reconciled. I'm going to turn mute off. You're going to hear it. It's going to get really gross for a bit, okay? So the next sound that's very disturbing is the nails on the chalkboard sound, okay? We're going to get it louder. Let's hear the chaos, okay? We're not going to have these little rooms in your energy field on mute. Like, let's just hear them at full volume, at full face, and then they can go. <laughs> they can move on out of the house, you know? We don't need that. It's like taking out the trash. you got to do that. And this is not something that you need anymore. All right, now it's going to be you scratching your own nails down a chalkboard and you're scratching just so overwhelmed by it and your nails are actually digging into the chalkboard and ripping it it's very disturbing and it disturbs you too and it's like you have to do this it's like you're forced to do it and you can never learn how to cope with it 
and it's wrong and it's wronging you and it's torturing you. I give you a fresh new chalkboard. Let's just keep going here. Let's see how long you'll do this before you'll stop torturing yourself. You don't want to just, it's very gruesome in here. How this has harmed your fingernails and your hands look very just covered in blood and you're on the ground now and you're just crying and you're very overwhelmed and it never goes away even if I brought in another chalkboard and you never did this again it's like the sound will forever be sort of stamped into your being the sound will forever be there. Now that's better. You're actually, um, it's starting to dissipate and clear. There's more, there's another layer to this one. It's a door you don't want to open inside yourself. You just wanted to stay behind that door where it's safe. Oh, what is this jumble? It's like you're not going to admit that you that this has everything to do with you. It was a it was circumstances. It was these all these events that came together that inspired all this to happen. I just it's just it wasn't me. <laughs> I say, okay, well, we don't need to talk about how anymore, how it happened or who did it. What are you going to do about it? She doesn't, she'd rather go look at the black orb now. Say, you dragged me down here. You had your chance. You could have looked at that black orb, but now we're here. So we got to look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you look at this, we'll go to the black orb. And Bobby will be there, as Bobby is here with you now. This is really hard, this one is. That electric energy is here, too. There's a lot of things that were, it's like a room that is on mute again. And it's made up of lots of wavy, um, extremely overwhelmingly bright light um, and waves, very sharp, like up and down type waves. And it's very like a, an energy fence, but it fills a whole room. And it's like um, things that have been said that you that you put it in the vault of yourself, like you didn't hear that. And it could have been so long ago, you may have been a baby. You may have been two years old. Um, so that's that's why right now we're in here. And it it's just like, it's out of your reach kind of thing. We're going to turn the volume up here, okay? This is gross. There's bodies in here that have no skin and the people are still alive and they're reaching their hand out to you. To help them and you're in here and you can't put their skin back you literally are in shock right now looking at this and again the sack of groceries this time it falls to the ground and everything it like rips and things spill out and you can't cope with it and I tell you that none of this is real This is how you need to stand firm with life. Don't let life get to you. Just let life be what life wants to be. And you do the best that you can do. Because in this situation, you feel responsible for something that you are not responsible for at all. And you also feel like you need to help people that you can't ever help, period. And then, what do you do? You drop your sack of groceries. And you 
are in this disarray that doesn't even need to exist, you see? So what is your responsibility to these people, truly? And what is your responsibility to yourself? Sometimes we help people better by continuing to work on ourselves and maintain consistency and balance. We actually help people more that way. They're all starting to heal now, but they're also fading away. And there's a little girl here now standing alone and she wants to help you with your groceries and you say, no, they're too heavy. You won't be able to carry them. You can't help me. And she says, I can. Yes, I can, mom. I can help you with these groceries. No, you can't. Are you serious? There's like 500 pounds of groceries in this one paper bag. You're going to screw it up. You're going to make it fall. It's going to get everywhere. So... It's odd. It's like when you say that to her, she sees herself as an adult capable of doing just as good of a job as you. But you belittle that feeling inside of herself and it creates kind of a, like, why don't you see what I can do? Why don't you see what I can do? I can do it. Why don't you just let me try? So, the next inspiration is for you to give her an apple and a, and a pe and then bread from your own sack of yourself so that she can help you carry it because she wants to. Because she wants to show you how great she is and what she can do and what she can do to help you in your life and how you can be proud of her because she can do it good for you. Suddenly we're at this doorway to the orb and it is calling you. And you are ready now for it. You're so much stronger now than you've ever been. And it is felt in the universe. And for you to be deterred or distracted or to kind of lose your footing is going to be a lot harder. You're a lot more solid than you've ever been. And you can face challenge. And in a weird way, you actually want some new challenges that you've never experienced before. And you're kind of starving for it because you're starving for that other you that you're trying to step into. And to step into her, you're going to need to have some challenges. And these challenges are actually fun ones. Like, um, let's say that, let's say you're about to start your own business and you've never done anything like this in your whole life. Now you have to learn a whole new way of managing yourself and your time and your money and clients, customers, you know, and products and all of this. But it's fun and awesome and exciting and brand spanking new. Do you see? It's like that kind of challenge. It's going to challenge you in a way that you're ready to step up to that challenge and you can do it because you got what it takes. You've been holding yourself back for too long. And Bobby is a sign that it's time, okay? All right, thank you so much for this experience was awesome. <laughs> All right, and for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, everybody, <laughs> thank you for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day.